What are the different characters in Swan Lake? Odette, Odile, say that. Odile. 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 Who are these people? Who's Odette? The good swan. The lady. white swan. It doesn't necessarily make her good. If you're looking for a twist of new and unusual this holiday season, turn to Caroline Stein and her new Fort Thomas Theater Company in Boca. They're creating an original piece of theater and movement from the ground up based on Swan Lake. Let's step into a rehearsal early in the creative process and talk with Caroline about the risks and challenges of breaking from holiday tradition. We wanted to choose something that would come from a familiar tale that people really love seeing and that there might already be buzz about, which there is with this one because it just happened at the ballet. But we wanted to do something that still would be um, different enough that we could create something new and fresh um, within the original tale. We try to keep some of the main markers of the original story. For example, I was having a conversation with my cast last week and asking them, all right, so how do you want this to end? In the ballet, it ends tragically with the two main characters killing themselves. In the original fairy tale, it ends happily. And I was actually asking the cast, what sort of ending do you want to have? What kind of message do you want to give to the audience? So when we create this particular piece, we'll keep the original characters that people know and love, like Odette and Odile and Siegfried and Rothbart the wizard. These characters people know from the ballet, but we will take that original story and sort of turn it on its head. So we keep the markers that make it familiar, but we change everything else. When we think about that moment where Odette arrives at the ball and sees Siegfried dancing with Odile, there's that moment that all of us at some point have had of like, why wasn't I enough, right? Like the parts, like if there's like a specific time in the show it goes, then it kind of makes more sense for there to be like a main and a background. But then also if there's not a specific time, it's just for like, to have, right. then it could be three different, because I wrote it to where it could be like one main part and then two background, or where they keep switching. In order to reach the deadlines that we need to reach, eventually I do have to step in and start making hard decisions and saying, what are the scenes that are missing? What are the messages that I want to make sure the audience takes with them? And how, in the time that we have left, do I attack that and make sure it happens? Some days I come in with a list of ideas that I want the cast to attack and it's easy and we don't hit any walls and they're creating movement sequences and they're creating scene work and we suddenly have all of this material to work with. Some days it's harder. Some days we come in and if I don't have it planned step by step, we can hit a lot of roadblocks and it can be difficult. Because you're working, you're not working with a script, so you're working with the energy and emotions and moods that the actors bring into the room themselves. Most of the friends I have in um, this kind of theater work uh, do pick one Christmas show that they do, if not every year, then almost every year. If this production is a huge success, it would be worthy of consideration to say, do we do a version of the same production we've already created? But I would be really open also to exploring different stories.